This is a sweet speaks. I need to talk about one of the most colorful Swedes, who, probably whoever lived in Sweden, at least uh, in the late 20th and early 21st century. Uh, and that man is uh, Ian Wachtmeister, who was a proper count. And uh, yes, his last name was written in German, so I guess it should be pronounced Wachtmeister. But he would always pronounce it Wachtmeister, so let's go with that. He died a few days ago. On November 11th, 2017, 84 years old. Uh, and he was a Swedish, as I said, he was a Swedish count, a proper one. He was uh, a business leader. But the big thing I know about him, which real, made a real impact on Sweden, was his short, short lived career as a politician. In 1991, there was a parliamentary election in Sweden. And uh, a few months before that election, I think it was in February in 1991, Ian Wachtmeister, together with the Swedish record company owner Bert Karlsson, founded a party that they called New Democracy. And even though Ian, or Count Ian, he was something as un untimely or old-fashioned as a count, he was also something as modern, or actually he was before his time, as the leader of a right-wing populist party. Uh, New Democracy, in, they were founded in February, and uh, they were they were all over the media. They their signs were everywhere. I remember this. This is the first election that I really remember. And in the election of September two thousand nineteen ninety one, they entered parliament, and of course they attracted a lot of, of crazy people. New parties always do that, but what happened was. Because this party, their platform was pretty classical right-wing populist. They wanted lower taxes, they wanted to restrict immigration, they wanted higher punishments for, for crimes, stuff like that. The one thing that was different about this party, I mean compared to other right-wing populist parties, was that they were in favor of a Swedish EU membership. Well, nobody's perfect. But what they did was, they were elected to parliament and they won some 20, 20 seats in the Swedish parliament and because of them... Okay, let's, let's not go there yet. Let's take something else first. When it was... During election night, there was this... Uh, they always show this, this program on Swedish TV. And Sweden in, in 1991 was still a country that, even though it wasn't an East Bloc country, it was pretty close. I grew up in, in DDR Sweden. And DDR stands for Deutsche Demokratische Republik, East Germany. So, GDR Sweden, East Bloc Sweden, something like that. Sweden was not a part of the East Bloc, but it was very close. In the mindset, the mentality, some of this is still left, but this party, on election night, they were showing this show on TV, counting the votes, you know, that kind of show. And at some point they had, called, they, they had invited the, the leaders of all the non-socialist parties. The Moderate Coalition Party, uh, the Liberal Party, uh, the Christian Democrats, the Center Party, which would be the Agrarian Party or something like that. But then Ian and his fellow party leader, Bert Karlsson, were also invited to to this show. And one by one the other party leaders started leaving. Leaving because this party had been smeared all over the media as a bunch of racists. And there probably were some racists among them, of course. Well, they were a new party, attracted a lot of crazy people. But their party platform was not racist. Maybe it was realist, but it wasn't racist. They were not talking about race or anything like that, not as far as I know. But they were talking about how Sweden needed to restrict immigration, and they were absolutely right about that, even then. And all the other party leaders, except for one, left. The only one who stayed was Carl Bildt, who was then leader of the Moderate Coalition Party. Um, but the others left, because they didn't want to touch this party. Uh, but what happened after that was that 
the social democratic government of Sweden fell. Because there was no longer a socialist majority in parliament. And this wouldn't have happened without new democracy. And what new democracy did, they were not included in the government. They were outside of the government, but they gave the government the necessary votes to get through their, their policies. And more than that, they criticized the built government, formerly a conservative or maybe a liberal conservative government, but they would criticize this government from the right, which was something that Carl Bildt really didn't appreciate. But he needed that criticism, trust me on that. And they changed Sweden. I think that the East Bloc Sweden that I grew up in, it would never have died without Count Ian Wachtmeister and his party. The party really was his creation. <laughs> but, uh, and the built government did a lot of good things. They did some bad things too, of course, but they introduced a school voucher system. You could discuss if that's a good or bad idea, but they did. They liberalized Sweden, and I mean liberal in the classical liberal sense. They deregulated. They did a lot of good stuff. But after three years, because back then, Sweden, there were elections in Sweden every third year. And after three years, Ian Wachtmeister left left as party leader due to internal party struggles. And after that the party just fell apart. They couldn't they, they, they had they couldn't survive without him. Uh, and after that, that was sort of it. But he did also a lot of other good things. He 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 started writing books about Sweden long before he started his party. I remember my grandpa had had his books and I read them and I thought they were hilarious. And he also wrote books after that of course. And what he did with Sweden he broke the social democratic monopoly on power because no, normal, regularly Swedish workers voted for his party. They wouldn't vote for the Conservative Party, even if they might have, or the, well, the Moderate Coalition Party, even if they maybe would have agreed with a lot of the policies of the Moderate Coalition Party, they wouldn't vote for them anyway because they saw them as people who who weren't in touch with reality. But what's what Count Ian and his friend back always said when they entered the debates were we are coming here from reality and people got a sense that that, that was true and of course he was something as untimely as a count he grew up I think on, on an estate uh, and he was a childhood, childhood friend with Olof Palme by the way but I prefer Ian of these two and uh, I, I really, Sweden owes so much to this man, and uh, that was really a, just a great thing. But sadly he died a few days ago, and uh, well, what can I say? He did a lot of good for Sweden, and uh, Sweden really would need another one, another one like him right now. That would be good. Uh, and I also know that when the Sweden Democrats came came to power, not power, but when they joined parliament and when they when they were, were up and coming, I know that Ian Wachtmeister was actually mentoring Jimmy Åkesson, the leader of the Sweden Democrats. Hopefully that was a good influence. Uh, or I, he was, of course, he must have been a good influence. And uh, I read some one of his last books, uh, uh, Sultana, the guys who, 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 who cleaned the, uh, well, the chimney and he was writing about how he needed to be a chimney cleaner in Sweden to get out all, all the dirt and get things out in the open so all his life at least for as long as I remember him he was trying to improve Sweden different ways uh, so I didn't know him personally I know some people who knew him but I didn't know him personally he might actually be one of my distant cousins but that's through some unproven lines Seriously, I am going to miss him. Ian Wachtmeister, proper count, business leader, politician, the first right-wing populist with any success in Sweden. Rest in peace. Sweden owes you big time. And that's really all I have to say about him right now. But by the way, before he died I wrote a chapter uh, for my upcoming book. 
And I call that chapter right-wing populism in Sweden, part one, new democracy. And I wrote some about him there. There is, I, I plan on writing a second chapter called uh, the Sweden Democrats. Uh, I just wanted to mention that. So that's really all I have to say. So until next time, have a nice day and God bless.